Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. We discuss six questions in nine minutes because leaders know how to be concise. Let's go ahead and get started with our guest today. Our first question, in a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Sure. I'm Douglas Brush, and I'm a security specialist and advisor for a company called Splunk. And I work with organizations uh, really across the world on improving their cybersecurity program and reducing their business risks. That is a big deal these days. So I'm sure you guys are busy, <laughs> especially with all the increase because of the COVID stuff that's been going on and people working more, remote, re- more remotely. I'm sure you've seen yep. a huge increase in things. So constantly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really what you're saying security. Security's never done. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's always something new to talk about. Very good. Uh, question number two What's the best thing about working with a team? Well, as much as I would like to think I know everything and quite often get asked to be in that position, I don't. Um, what I really enjoy about working with a team is getting a lot of other views and insights into things that I might be missing. You know, the first thing that I'll ask in a team engagement and when I'm getting all the pieces together and kind of orchestrating a team effort is to say, you know, here's what I think, but what am I missing? Because often there's something that, you know, I have my own biases, my own beliefs on something, and it could be wrong. So I want to hear from other people about, Hey, what, what, What's the blind side here? Where, where can we be making some improvements? Great insights. I really like that because you're right. Nobody, no one person ever knows everything. And we can multiply our efforts when we share the information and share the load a little bit. That's great. Yep. Question number three, I hear from other leaders of teams that it can be a challenge to get team members engaged. Tell us your thoughts. Yeah, it definitely can be. I think a lot of organizations suffer from a situation, and this happens just about everywhere I've I've worked, and I've worked with global companies for the past 25 years, and if you name a company, I've probably had a touch point with them, Um, but it's not knowing where to even find the resources of your teams. Um, You know, a lot of that exists in people's brains, and it becomes kind of this siloed set of information of resources that people don't know where to go to find, um, where to find other people to bring into their team, or there might be hesitancy because they, you know, they might, particularly now I've seen it more in the COVID world where it's like, ah, I'm looking at the company profile of this person. Is this the right person? I don't want to bother them. I'm sure they're busy. Um, so it's not knowing where to look and being fearful of reaching out to people because you might think, oh, I might look, I might look stupid asking the wrong person the wrong question. That's an interesting perspective. I appreciate you sharing that. That's, that's great information. Question number four, what other piece of advice do you have for leaders of teams? Uh, you know, for, for at least what's worked for me, and obviously everybody's mileage might vary, but it's really keeping an open floor and an open door. Um, you know, a lot of the teams that I've run for the past 20 years, you know, I'll sit people down and we'll hash things out, but really kind of create a opportunity for people to speak up, challenge me. Again, as I said prior, you know, what am I missing? You know, I don't believe I know everything. I'll be very emphatic and maybe forceful or direct on things, but I encourage people to speak up and challenge. And so I think that's really where you get the best cake made is when everybody kind of comes in with their own angle of the recipe, adds their input. And at the end of the day, um, have, have a path forward that everybody has an agreement on. And you know, it doesn't always have to be a decision by committee. You know, I, I always believe that, you know, when you are in these team leadership engagements, you are a leader, you have to make the ultimate decision and you don't want to abdicate or absolve yourself from that responsibility, but getting that information, allowing people to openly challenge the, the ideas so you can kind of refine it is so incredibly important when you finally make that, that final decision. Mm, great advice. Great advice. I especially like that part where you talked about keeping the door open and challenging people and allow them to challenge you a little bit. That takes some humility, but that is an important component of good leadership. So thank you so much for emphasizing that. Question number five, what other successful leaders of teams would you like to recognize that have had a positive influence in your life? Yeah, there, there's almost too many, too many to, to remember. But I, I happen to be very fortunate of growing up in this environment of kind of a consultancy in organizational communications, because my parents were the forefronts on this. So they would go into organizations and restructure things with team leaders and groups. So I got to kind of really see how those things evolved in a lot of organizations. And they were probably 
the most uh, influential in many ways. And I was very fortunate, again, to kind of have that in my backyard. But the fact that they would, you know, really kind of come in and teaching in leadership positions, and I would say that was a really key thing is they, they were very much uh, teachers more than anything. So as they looked at their teams, it's like, what else can they impart on others? Because it made what they were doing more scalable. You know, it wasn't always on them. The, the, the world wasn't always resting on their shoulders. They were very good at delegating and empowering other people. And I find that is something that's carried with me throughout my entire life is as I've mentored other people and coached other teams is how quickly I can get myself out of that decision box so somebody else is enabled to do it. I love that concept of empowering people to the point where you almost take yourself out of your own job. And uh, it's, you know, a little scary to some people to think about that way. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to eliminate your, yourself. It just simply means you're empowering your people and you, you get a lot further with that. And I, I, I'm anxious now for our last question to talk about it because of, of what you just explained with growing up in this kind of an environment. Tell us about this. Is the last question. Tell us about your first job. Yeah, you know, there, my, my, there were several first jobs, in a sense, you know, even early on, when we, as soon as I was able to get working papers in New York State and be eligible as, as a worker, at like I think 12 or 13, I, I got a job at, at a camp um, and working within those kind of environments with lots of people. Um, and then out of high school, really my first job was my first business. I had decided there really wasn't a career path in the early 90s for some of the things I was doing around technology. And so I, I basically hung out a shingle, started my own business. Again, very fortunate to have supportive and loving and encouraging parents that helped me um, in, in a way it's tough love, um, you know, get this business off the ground. But that was, you know, really in 1993 was my first business and it, uh, I've just been <laughs> been 30 years almost since, and it's just been going by. <laughs> it does move quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that's great. Doug, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. How can people find you? Sure. The easiest uh, place to find me, it's certainly on my podcast, is cybersecurityinterviews.com. And I'm also on LinkedIn. That's probably my most active social media drug of choice, where I'm there more often than anything else. And uh, very easy to find there at, at Douglas Brush. Um, you, you almost can't miss me. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more ideas, go to teamengagementpodcast.com. Again, that's teamengagementpodcast.com. And we also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining us today and have a great day.